Jones. Oh, you guys see the sign fly away? I wonder who died. Doug, today we are educating the public about the ravages of Poland syndrome. Ravages? Are you sure you're not being a bit, as the cool kids call it, extra? Shut up! Huh. We need ratings here. And now we have Aaron Burnett with the story. Aaron? Thank you, Cheryl and Don. I'm here with Dr. Howe to discuss this disorder and cover the story. He'll be with us shortly. Swirl around. Where is he? Give it a taste. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely from the finest spring in Poland. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me. You did that? Yes, you all did. And I have come here today to discuss Poland Anomaly with you and with the American people. Oh yes, please tell us, um, how did your disorder get its name? Well, there was a great surgeon named Alfred Poland. He lived in England in 1841, and when he was dissecting a deceased patient, he realized that he was missing a portion of his pectoral girdle. I see. Thus, because of his discoveries, the disorder was named after him. I see. Now, I have a question. My son, he he doesn't ha leave his room. Okay, so he barely speaks. Doctor, please tell me, does he and the rest of America's teens have Poland Syndrome? No, just because you're immobile doesn't mean you have Poland Syndrome. Poland Syndrome is defined as the webbing of your fingers, like this, like you look like a duck. You don't quack like a duck, but you look like a duck. And you also have. We'll cut this right. We'll cut. Good yeah. Of this. We'll cut that. You also have the missing of an entire side of the pectoral muscle. So you have like a muscle here, and you won't have one here. That's going to ruin your posture. You're going to hunch over for a bit. And Poland syndrome does not necessarily cause immobility, but it's not necessarily the easiest disease to move around with. Are all cases the same? No, not all cases are the same. Some people have the web digits. Around 99% of people get web digits who have Poland syndrome. Some may lose part of their pectoral muscle. Some may lose all their pectoral muscle. Some may find that the only real issue they have is that their rib may be a bit overdeveloped and they have to hunch over to a side. Poland syndrome is not a one-size-fit-all disorder. It's very, very varied. Now, how can we prevent this disease? You can't really prevent Poland syndrome. This disease is sort of genetic. It's... Sort of genetic? It's not really... There's no real genetic marker. The research hasn't gone there yet. But as what we can tell, if you had cousins with Poland syndrome, there's a good chance your son or your daughter may get it as well. And mothers had been known to affect their daughters with Poland syndrome and their sons as well because they as we know our leading theory is there's a gene that possibly causes the rib to overdevelop and the blood veins to underdevelop in the embryo which leads to these malformed limbs. I see. Mm -hmm. Even with our relative lack of information we still believe that this disease is at least a recessive or sex linked disorder. We can't say this for certain because our funding, we are orphan disease. We don't get a lot of funding. Hopefully in the future we'll get more funding and we'll be able to, you know, find out the exact cause. But for what we theorize, it may be a recessive or excellent gene. Okay, Affects, so affecting males ten times more than females. Another question for you, doctor. What if I nor my relatives have this disorder? Is there still a chance that my DNA... That's that's what you call that, correct? Oh, you're afraid that your DNA is going to mutate and give you Poland syndrome. We haven't seen any cases of that so far. So I can say a very, very, very lukewarm no to that one. And what has science discovered on the progression of this disease in humans, say, once you have the disease? Oh, it onset through puberty, it'll be obvious in boys, because that's when, and in girls too, because that's when you're supposed to develop a pectoral muscle. But... Once you see that it's missing, Poland syndrome is it. It's probably not going to progress further as you age. You're just going to be stuck with the same symptoms. 
And so let's, let's talk a bit about the prognosis mm-hmm. of this disorder. So we can say that an early diagnosis can lead to an excellent prognosis. Yeah, you could have a good quality of life. You are not going to lose any years of your life just because of this disease alone, if it's treated well. In fact, celebrities such as the boxer Jerome Thomas and the Formula One championship racer Fernando Alonso have learned to live with this disease because they got reconstructive surgery early on. They were able to fix their limbs and the muscles that were missing and able to live a normal life. And from what I've gathered from this information is that that reconstructive surgery you speak of has to do with the chest walls. Exactly. Correct. Nice. I think that's everything we need to speak about today. It's meeting with you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and that's that. This guy, what do you mean? The following are victims of Poland syndrome.